Hey, what's up? This is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. I just got a new package in the mail. This is my Mac Pro, sorry, my MacBook. And I, I wanna do some video comparisons of this guy to my other Mac computer so that you can get an idea, is the MacBook going to be fast enough? One of the things that I think is really important is the real world usage tests. And you don't really get that from the benchmark numbers. Everyone's like, oh, this is a really low power device. And yes, it is a lower power device. It uses less power, but the processor in it is a totally different architecture. And so we really haven't seen this in a Mac before. And it's gonna be unfair to judge it based on the, the megahertz or the gigahertz of the processors. These things don't really uh, make a whole lot of difference right now. A lot of the things that you're gonna notice is performance and usability comes from the SSD and Apple has improved the speed. So we're gonna see that boost making this a, a more usable machine. So I have it right here. I took it out of the box and it is, it's pretty nice and light. This weighs as much as two iPads. So you can put two iPad Airs together. That's the weight you're looking at, just over two pounds for this guy. And it comes with an interesting adapter. So you get right out of the box. It almost looks like the, I think it's a five watt uh, iPad charger. This, or is it the 12 watt? Um, it has the connection thing, but they didn't sell me something to go along with that. So I'm assuming you can use your other Mac connection. And then this also comes with this uh, long cable. It's probably like six feet long. If I were to measure it, I sort of just stretched it out and it was like, that's sort of what it felt like. Now, uh, this is going to be USB on C on both ends. So you've got this new connector and that plugs right into the port on this little device, if you can see that right there. So let me just throw it in. It was like that. And then it just plugs right into the MacBook. So let's just plug that in. Now this is reversible, which is what I'm really excited about. I like reversible plugs, especially USB. I really hate when I cannot reverse that. So that is the plug and it takes a, a good amount of force. I could probably, um, I can hold the device with that plug. So that's kind of interesting. And if I just pull that out, if this does get pulled off your desk, it's going to pull your Mac. Now, a lot of people talked about the MagSafe and not having it here. And the reason I think that we do not have MagSafe on this is twofold. First, we needed more data connections. And secondly, this laptop is so light, if you had a magnet on it, it's gonna pull it off the table no matter what. So it's, it's pretty light and its ability to sort of slide around on the table, it doesn't take that much force. So if you had a dog running by and you had MagSafe, guess what? This laptop is still going on the floor because MagSafe isn't that loose of a connection. All right, so with that said, I want to review this. The model I have right here, this is the uh, 1.2 gigahertz model. I could not get the, the faster model just yet, but that's something that I'll be getting. So that is this right here. And all my notifications are going off on this because it's been uh, a little bit idle. So I'm gonna see if I can turn the audio off. And uh, I've, I've done some typing tests. I'm gonna do some more typing tests. I do really like this keyboard. I don't get the fatigue that I was getting on my keyboard that's in front of me. So I use the wireless uh, chiclet keyboard from Apple. So that's this little thing right here. And I have a bunch of these that I connect either to my Mac Pro, which is down here, or I connect to my MacBook Pro 2012. So I'm gonna be doing some reviews. I want your insight into what you would like to learn about. Some of the things that I am going to test are going to be sort of real world usage. Now this is gonna be with Final Cut Pro X. This is gonna be with Logic Pro X. This is going to be with Xcode. I'm gonna be making iPhone and iPad apps, trying to figure out, okay, how long does the build process take for a bigger app versus a smaller app and what you can expect. Uh, with that said, I do also want to know the game performance. So I'm gonna check out StarCraft II, I'm gonna check out Diablo III, Hearthstone, and maybe Team Fortress from Steam. We'll see what I get into with that. And if you have any recommendations for things that you'd really like to see this sort of cross compared to, 
I don't have a ton of games, so I want to focus on just a couple. And the other portion is sort of the web browsing video playback. So uh, maybe 4K video if I can get that from YouTube and then 60 frames per second from YouTube. So just playing around with that, doing it for just general email usage and, and picking it up around the apartment or the house, however you're going to use it. Uh, and then we're going to get into sort of connectivity. So I have two of the connectors here. I've got the multi adapter thing in Majig. Now it's interesting because this also comes with the USB C, and I've got the just the USB right here. You can plug this one right into that, and so you can sort of daisy chain these. Now I don't know if you can daisy chain this one and actually get video. I'm pretty sure this only powers one display, but I could be wrong. I have to double check the specs. I know we're going to be limited on the amount of displays you can power. So the one thing I can't figure out is I've got my Thunderbolt display over here and I have no idea how I can connect to it. I don't know if there's a Thunderbolt to HDMI plug or something like that. So I'm a little bit lost on how to get video from my MacBook to my Thunderbolt display over here. If you have a suggestion or something that might work, I have a Blackmagic um, Thunderbolt, but I don't think that'll help either. So um, I'm honestly not sure. If you like this video, please hit the like button. You can subscribe for more updates when I get to play around with this computer a little bit more. I really haven't had a chance to use it much other than setting up a lot of the accounts, downloading some of the, the much needed applications that I use on a regular basis. So if you have any insight, if you have any tests that you think would be more of a performance and real world usage indicator, please comment down below. And I mean, I think Geekbench 3 is, is okay. I don't think it's amazing at understanding how responsive this is going to be and if it's going to be able to handle all of the daily apps that I use on a, a daily basis and if that sort of aligns with what you want to do with this laptop. All right, so I've got the Mac Pro 2013. It's an eight core, so that's pretty beefy, way faster than any other Mac that I have. I got the MacBook 1.2 gigahertz. I actually just ordered the 1.3 gigahertz, but that's going to have like a three to four week shipping delay. So I won't get that right away. And then I have in my bag over here, a MacBook Pro 2012. It's a quad core uh, i7. So I'm going to be testing the same type of applications across all of them, giving you some idea for the performance. Everyone's saying that this is the performance of the Mac, uh, the MacBook Air. 2011, and I don't think that's the case. I think this is a lot faster, and it really comes down to those real world scenarios. So if you like the video, click the like button, thumbs up, and I look forward to showing you more insight about this MacBook 12 inch. All right, it screen looks amazing. I think you're gonna wanna check it out if you haven't already done that at the Apple Store. All right, have a great day.